IATA, IKO, FAA, all these organizations have their own set of airport codes. So which one should you use and how do they work? Well, in this video, we'll explain everything you need to know about airport codes. At the end, we'll also talk about how to use these codes as a pilot. Hello and welcome. My name is Greg. I've been an FAA flight instructor for over 20 years and I'm the lead instructor at Pilot Institute, the online school that helps you achieve your aviation dreams. Okay, so what are airport codes and why do they exist? Airport codes codes come in three main types, ICAO, IATA, and FAA LIDs, each serving a specific purpose. ICAO codes assigned by the International Civil Aviation Organization are four-letter codes. They're also globally used by pilots and air traffic controllers. The International Air Transport Association issues IATA codes. These are three-letter airport codes mainly for passengers. Flight ticketing, baggage handling, and cargo shipping primarily use these codes. Lastly, the Federal Aviation Administration assigns Location Identifier, or LIDs, to airports within the United States. LIDs are only used in the United States. They use a combination of three or four characters, including letters and numbers. Every airport has one, two, or even all three of these codes, and small airstrips may have no code at all. We'll get into why they are so many different types of airport codes later, but first let's discuss why they exist. In a nutshell, airport codes are used to identify an airport. So why don't we just use the airport name instead, you might say? Well, there are three main reasons why. First, airport codes are much shorter than the actual airport name. It's much easier to say JFK than it would be to say John F. Kennedy International Airport. That's a mouthful. Second, airport codes avoid language barrier and difficult airport names. They also prevent mixing up between an airport that share the same name. And third, an airport code stays the same even if the name of the airport changes. So that's why airport codes exist. But now, let's take a look at the first type of airport codes, the ICAO code. Pilots, ATC, aviation authorities are using ICAO codes. Each of these codes contains four letters, but ICAO doesn't just assign every airport a random four-letter identifier and just calls it a day. They have a system, and here's how it works. The first letter of the ICAO code is for a general geographic region. These include L for Western Europe, for example, or S for South America. In the United States, we use K. The second letter narrows it down further, usually to the country, if it's within a region that has more than one country. Some larger countries also use the second letter depending on the region in the actual country. For example, the US uses H for Hawaii, A for Alaska, or even G for Guam. The last two letters identify a specific airport. For example, Cape Town International airport uses FACT for its code, FA for South Africa and then CT for Cape Town. The last two letters usually relate to the city's name, but sometimes reference the airport name instead. Okay, so that brings us to the second type of airport codes, the FAA Location Identifier or LID. The FAA developed its own system of naming airports, which actually works in parallel with the ICAO codes. The biggest difference here between the ICAO and the FAA LIDs is that the FAA LIDs use a combination of three letters and also numbers, while the ICAO is using only four and only letters. Every registered airport in the US has an FAA LID. For most large airports, the FAA LID is the same as the last three letters of the ICAO code. For example, our home airport here in Prescott uses KPRC as the ICAO code and PRC as the FAA LID. Just like ICAO, the FAA has a few rules surrounding the airport codes. FAA LIDs usually don't start with a K, an N, a Q, a W, a Y, and a Z. Take note, there's gonna be a quiz at the end. Now, that's because K and W are reserved for public radio stations, while the letter Q is used for Morse code called the Q codes, and then N is used for naval air bases, and Z designates air route traffic control centers. Now, to avoid confusion, the letter Y is not used because it overlaps with a bunch of airport codes used in Canada. Despite all these rules, the FAA occasionally assigns LID starting with these letters anyway. So, an example is New Orleans, Lake 
Metron Airport, which is N-E-W. The FAA only assigns all letter codes to airports with 5,000 foot runways or longer, and then have an advanced weather station. So small public use airports have LIDs that use one letter and two numbers. There's one last thing that you need to know about FAA LIDs. There aren't always three characters. Small private use airfields are different. They get two letters and two numbers, making for a four character LID. Now, luckily, there's no chance of mixing that up with four letter ICAO codes because ICAO doesn't use numbers in their airport codes. Okay, there's one more airport code left, IATA. IATA codes only use three letters and they're not really as common as you think. Why? Well, because only airports with routine scheduled passenger or cargo service are going to get an IATA code. General aviation airports don't use IATA because, well, they don't sell tickets and they don't need to have baggage handling. And that's the main difference really between IATA codes and the other two. IATA codes aren't really for pilots, they're used for baggage and passenger handling. Passengers and airport staff use IATA codes in order to identify airports. Now, because of this, IATA codes don't follow any strict name convention. Instead, they try to stay as close to the airport name as possible. SYD is for Sydney, LGA is for LaGuardia. Okay, now that you know all three types of airport codes, how do you actually use these as a pilot? Well, first, you need to know which type of airport code to use. As a pilot, you'll use ICAO codes most of the time. But what about FAA LIDs? Well, the FAA adopted the ICAO flight plan format in 2019, which means that you'll use ICAO codes for flight planning. But FAA flight plans still accept LIDs, especially for small airfields and private airstrips that don't have an ICAO code just yet. With that being said, you still need to identify what type of airport code you're looking at. The first clue is the length of the code. Three letter code cannot be an ICAO airport code. The next step is to see if the code contains any numbers. IATA and ICAO codes only consist of letters. So if there is a number, it means that it's from probably a small US airfield. If you've only got three letters in the code, then well, it's probably an FAA LID or an IATA code. Many LIDs are the same as their corresponding IATA code, but there are exceptions. So in this case, searching the FAA database will give you the right answer. But what if the airport you're flying to or from does not have a code? Well, while small airports in the US have at least an FAA LIDs, some of them actually don't. So these airports are usually private property and sometimes they're only temporary. So if the airfield does not have an FAA LID, make sure that you put the nearest available airport code when you file your flight plan. At this stage, note the actual destination in the remark section of the flight plan. Uh, you can also use a larger airport as a reference in order to coordinate with ATC. Helicopters do that when they're landing at a temporary landing site or on private property. Now to navigate to the airfield, use the GPS coordinates. Most aircraft GPS systems will allow you to enter specific latitude and longitude information. Now sectional charts often show small airports, even the inactive ones. If it's not on a chart, navigate by looking to a visual landmark in the vicinity of the airport. Now if you want to see how to use airport codes when you plan for a flight, check out this video right here where we plan a trip to a small airport in the Grand Canyon. We had a ton of fun. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.